mean, do you agree with the statement that inflammation is the cause of m most medical issues these days? Like it starts with inflammation. Um, partly, um, but it, some inflammation's helpful because you know if you exercise or go in, in have a cold plunge, it triggers inflammation. So it's all about if you never have inflammation, you'd never heal anything or grow any muscles. So it's. Yeah, but I'm talking about like chronic inflammation, like. Oh yeah, like yeah, definitely. Systemic... Or, yeah, def well, yeah, definitely. But that's that's stemming from poor mitochondrial function. But if you've got too much nitric um, oxide sitting in your mitochondria, and this mushroom can move the the nitric oxide out of the way you're sort of improving mitochondrial function so absolutely Which it's is. sort of uh, i know i completely agree yeah stress and inflammation is a massive cause of disease but inflammation is more complicated than people oh, think yeah. it's but oh, um but I think this is back to what we were talking about in the first live. And I was mentioning DMSO, um, that DMSO, you can just use um, NEAT uh, on injuries and they use it on race horses. And some people are really into DMSO, especially if they've had a spinal injury or it's used in veterinary medicine. But it's a really good solvent. So I was asking Cam, can I dissolve this mushroom in DMSO and rub it on an injured disc or, or a, a pulled muscle? Because you were saying in the last live about tinctures, you add locally so i think this is back to what yeah. we, we were just saying the inflammation it can actually work like what do people well, usually no, use yeah. the diclofenac gel or something it you know but this would be a natural version do you want to talk about it because you know so that people can hear the second time i, I, I mean yeah um there's reports of people using um to, to great success muscaria in uh, basically uh, an alcohol extraction and applying it straight to areas of chronic inflammation, like sprained ankles and, and mainly sciatica. People are using it on the spine mm. a lot for sciatica. Um, yeah, without yeah. This, without this increased level of transportation to the area. So God knows what would happen. If it's that powerful by itself, you might not even need the transporter, you know. But if you did, it, yeah. if you get it to penetrate deeper. But if you effectively amped up its ability to penetrate your skin, then yeah. you might run into some other issues with um, it being too potent on the area. And Like I say, this is completely new. Yes, it, is. it is. I just want to say, um, someone wants to talk about Liberty Cap, so we definitely will. I just want to say thank you to Sealed Universe for sending roses. I really appreciate that. That's really oh, yes, kind. Thank you. So um, absolutely. So basically the uh, mushroom or the, the, the um, just so people know what we're talking about, we're talking about this mushroom here, the fly agaric, and now we're talking about DMSO as well. So we're saying if you dissolve this mushroom extract in DMSO and rubbed that into your bad back, it would probably be better than both of them put together. So we'll have to try that because lots of people who are fans of DMSO, definitely I've heard for, for backs and, you know, big serious Seal. muscle strains. And then I think what we were talking about this morning, that it's very other people have discovered you can put it locally on an injury. So that's, again, something to play with. So, so far, the mushroom can help with anxiety. Help with sleep, mm. help with depression. It's looking like it's a nootropic drug, so it's a, a, a neurological stimulator. And then you're looking at it, it can be used as a like a dream stimu stimulating experience thing at higher doses or a delirium. And then you've got muscle pain, um, stopping the inflammation cascade of, of of inflammatory conditions. I mean, is there anything else that we've we've missed? Because it's looking it's looking pretty good that. But the thing is, that's the thing. Mushrooms are really closely related to us. Like we're much more closely related to mushrooms than plants. So uh, an immune system wise, you know, they've got an immune system as well. So it does make sense to use mushroom medicine before plant medicine, just because the mushroom is more closely related to us. I think um, people like want... Oh, sorry. Pardon? Oh, sorry. I said, well, you like this. The mushroom's immune system, yeah. The reason why they're so good at regulating immune function is because mushrooms digest their food externally. And so that means they've got effectively one cell wall between the outside and the inside of the mycelium. Mm. So they have to develop very, very strong potent compounds to stop. Because you can imagine, you know, billions of bacteria in the soil trying to get at them. Um, th these these mushrooms effectively have developed these incredible Im immune functions to stop bacteria coming in because their cell oh, yeah. walls are so thin. Well, well, bacteria and fungi are arch enemies, so you know it's like uh, it's they're obviously m mushrooms and fu well and fungi uh, um, are, are very um, 
geared up to fighting against oh, so Mr. Stella GRL 79 Centre Rose. But yeah, I think I think the point is, yeah, we know that it's the sort of phylogenetically um, fungi and mushrooms are their own sort of genus or whatever. But I was just saying they're more closely related to us than plants. So it would just be more yeah. sensible to get medicines from them there so i think people want to talk a little bit about liberty caps but i think in terms of hashtags and what we learned today about tiktok getting really upset about certain things it seems to be all right if we talk about um this mushroom um it doesn't like me making a video showing anybody it so i think it seems it seems to be that um i suppose for liberty caps they're out at the moment for certain and i think in scotland and where it's cold they've been out for a while mm. I think, if anything, just because your account's already been warned, um, mm. we, we could just stick to the mascaria on this one. And then if we get away with this one, then possibly start diving into a little bit more of the other. Because we don't know what, what's caused the account warning, but it, they're talking about libs or we're talking about this. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't talk about this. The first one I make, I hashtagged, uh, you know, the psilocybin is a hashtag on, basically on TikTok, I have learned if you invent your own hashtag that it doesn't like, it's going to hate that. But there was like a million sort of like sort of views attached. So I think it might have just been because I was waving it around or maybe it's just never, it doesn't know that it's not illegal because it was flagging me up for uh, illegal pro uh, products and alcohol and tobacco. So I, I, I appealed, like you said, well, I think it's like anything. You just have to always be a bit careful what you talk about and um, uh, how, how you, because we're not giving medical advice or anything. We're just telling people if they want to explore this, how to not hurt themselves or, you know, how to prepare things properly. And I think now, as, as everyone knows, that the, the, um, psych the psilocybin mushrooms are out. Uh, but again, when it comes to research, there's way more research. Well, there's tons of research on psilocybin and depression and alcoholism yeah. and addiction. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, uh, this is why I think that this mushroom is gaining more popularity because it's big brother, effectively, you know, Liberty Caps are ga gaining so much traction, especially in mainstream. Mm -hmm. People are starting to look, well, I can't get them. What's the other? Oh, I've heard this one's psychedelic. And then this is why we're doing this because we don't want people just going out and just trying to eat one of these raw or just drying it on a radiator and then trying to mm -hmm. eat raw and then writing the self off. There's a whole process that the Flyer Garrick has to go through for this conversion. And then you've got... Each flyer garrick is different. You could pick two flyer garricks from the same woodland but at different sides, and one might contain significantly higher levels of abtenic acid, uh, or the ratios will be different completely. So you have to mix all of the caps up together. And then I've seen people crushing them up, so you get a load of the, the, the dried um, flyer garrick caps, crush them up into a powder and make your tea yeah. out of them, so it kind of equalises all of the dose. Yeah, I think so, because I think I had some, I've got some little sort of button, sort of like a, almost like a button one, but with mushrooms, you can, you just never know which ones are going to be um, sort of potent, even with any kind of mushroom, the tiniest, ugliest, mankiest looking one can be super potent, and you can get a big, fat, juicy one that's got yeah. hardly anything in it so i think it's i've always like you said uh, like um with when i when i prepare mine i'm going to put the just the the tops and but keep each top separate because like you said one one mushroom could be completely different from the other i lost a friend what? eating them out yes <laughs> oh. yeah people talk about nerve damage yeah, yeah, yeah it, well I mean, if the nerve damage is, is caused by inflammation and this mushroom, as, as Sarah just said, has got um, massive anti-inflammatory properties, but at a completely different level to what any other medication that we've got access to today effectively works at, then it, it could possibly fix inflammatory conditions that we can't currently mm. deal with because it's working higher up the, the inflammatory cascade. Basically, at the, at, at the root, if it's working at the mitochondria, then it's working... You know, at the at the deepest level of inflammation that it can get. At. Yeah, definitely. And I think in terms of compounds, it's like the context. When you've got the whole mushroom or the whole anything, it's all sort of or the or the whole spectrum of the sun. It's not an isolated compound. Whereas yeah. when you're just talking about 
um, ibogenic acid on its own. It's been isolated. And then, yes, it can be toxic because it doesn't have muscomol and the other compounds to buffer it, if that makes sense. So I think it's, again, you know, taking it in context that the whole mushroom is not the same as one compound isolated from the mushroom. Well, also, there's some information that I was reading as well that's saying that when you consume, say, if you just consume the mushroom, for example, with high levels of antinic acid in it, when it goes into your stomach and then is digested, a lot of the conversion happens. But then as the ibotenic acid is being transported around your body as well, um, as it's passed from, I think it's neuron to neuron or cell to cell, mm -hmm. um, there's further conversion happening as it's going. So you don't actually, by consuming the mushroom, you don't actually come into contact with that much ibotenic acid. And that's the difference between doing that and then getting ibotenic acid in a syringe and injecting it in rats' brains to cause lesions. Yes. Effectively. Yeah, exactly. It's like the cane. It's really, It's very similar to canate in the um, in the psychedelic seaweed. That the seaweed itself, you know, is safe enough to use. But it's when you start extracting compounds out of plants you, and things and you, purifying. Like form. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody wants to ask about wavy caps. Wavy, you, you're on about um, psilocybe sinensis, which is uh, uh, the second most potent psilocybin-containing mushroom in the UK. Um, but you have to be very careful with wavy caps because wavy caps um, look very, very similar to Gallerina magenta, which is the skull cap or the funeral bell. So that is a very, it contains um, amatoxin. So it'll kill you the same way the death cap kills you, which basically is the first week you feel like you're dying. Then the second week you feel like you're getting better. And then the third week you'll just die, <laughs> which is which is not nice. Because it, it kind of like lures you into a false sense of security and then you know, you know, liver failure. Um, basically, it just pretty much liquefies your uh, your liver and your kidneys. So no, you're very like this is there's a reason why wavy caps aren't particularly popular for mushroom psilocybin people because it's yeah you can get it very very easy wrong very easy. Oh, yes, that with the wavy cap, because I know that you made a video about it so people can follow your channel and they can actually see you explaining the difference between the wavy cap and the, what was it called, the monks, is it? So, the, what, um, what? The deadly gallerina. Is it, that's so deadly gallerina, gallerina. Yeah, gallerina magenta is its fancy Latin name. And then uh, basically a funeral bell or a skull cap or the deadly gallerina are its common names. Um, but this, this, the, the Della Gallerina is the whole reason the saying in mushrooms is beware of LBMs, which are little brown mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, and, and it's a, and great big like red ones like this. Somebody was asking yeah. about buying spores, and I would I, Mush Buddies. He's a really decent guy in the UK. If you're in the UK, and he's really helpful. But yeah, you can buy spores and do what you want because the spores are completely legal um, in the UK. You can buy as much spores as you like to look down a microscope. Yeah. So, um, hmm? so, you want to yeah, get one of these? Yeah. Get one of them, Sarah. <laughs> what is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got all different backgrounds because this is like I'm just trying doing it in a different room. Um, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, sealed universe. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, what's he saying? What's he saying? I've learned so much watching you. Yeah, no, if if. Also, everybody, sealed universe. He makes these cool little, like, vivariums with, like, sealed ecosystems inside. It's mental. Okay, I'll go and follow so sealed universe. Yeah, he's, yes. he's, 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 the channel's very good. Oh, yeah. But then, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you guys got any more, any more questions? So, we've covered, we've covered pretty much preparation. So, preparation oh, is it has to be decarboxylated first. And then depending if you want it as a nootropic or you want it as like a, a brain stimulating um, medicine or you want it as more of a sedative medicine, then that'll depend on how far then you further decarbox decarboxylate it. So you can then make it into a tea, which obviously will be exposed to further heat and you'll get a further um, conversion. And then you can also take it with lemon as well, which you also get a further conversion. But to to what degree these conversions are, I don't know. Because like I say, there's no kind of graphs or charts that says hold it at this and do this and you get this. And, yeah. Because yeah, 
because it all depends on how much ibergenic acid and muscomol there was in the mushroom to start with because yeah. some might have more muscomol naturally and others might have hardly any so the conversion process might take longer uh, somebody's a asking um about uh, mood disorder i think they said and psilocybin uh if it's if it's bipolar i wouldn't um if it's sort of just common garden anxiety and depression like in their studies um that, that could be okay but i think last time we were when we were talking about all the studies on psilocybin you have to bear in mind that they're all done with therapists uh, as uh, on board as yeah. well so all of the studies yeah. What would you recommend for the first time as a brain stimulant? That would be, I think, what the, the low dose of um, of this mushroom here. We were talking about this earlier, a low dose of this prepared properly to get GABA and glutamate yeah. um, balanced. So did you come across anything in literature about how to or what rates of conversion would balance them best? But is that muscarin? Muscarin is the nootropic, isn't it? Um, well, mus they all are in their own way, apart from muscazone, but we don't, muscazone is the one that's not known about. So, so muscarin is like an, it's very, it, acetylcholine is uh, almost the same as uh, muscarin. And when people discovered, uh, um, when they, when they were, when people were exploring these mushrooms about a hundred years ago, they got uh, muscarin and acetylcholine mixed up. That's why acetylcholine receptors are called, they have M, there's like muscarinic acetylcholine receptors because it's that similar to acetylcholine, the muscarin in the, in these mushrooms and similar, but then, um, the uh the, the muscomol that's the GABA A and the GABA C agonist. So that keeps you calm while you have your brain stimulation. And then the um ibogenic acid, that's the one that interacts with the glutamate receptors. So they're again important for learning and, and it's the more stimulatory side. But also too much ibogenic acid can be neurotoxic, but that would be vastly amounts. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I got one of the caps that was nice and dry and just took a big bite of it. And um, basically, just to see what would happen, which I know that you've got 15 grams is is is, a, is made into a tea as a full dose. I thought that would be easily a micro dose, yeah. and um, I just experienced more of a calming effect. I got visual acuity and sharpness mm -hmm. in colours and saturation increased in colour, um, and that would just have to like you know, like a well, like a this much of a bite or something. So I'd be interested to see like further. How, how how far it could go if you know what i mean yeah or oh, someone's just saying oh that's um fly agaric yes the whole pretty much the whole live's been talking about this mushroom but um someone was asking about the spore company mush buddies um mush mush buddies uh is oh the thing is this this mushroom is completely legal um when we're talking about how to use it sensibly so there isn't a horrible accident and it gets in the sun newspaper or the news and then becomes illegal so, so that was kind of Cam's sort of motive for doing this to educate people. So we're not promoting anything. We're educating and just saying, if you want to explore this, you've got to prepare it properly. Like with um, Liberty Cat mushrooms and psilocybin mushrooms, you can just eat them fresh. Like you can pick them and eat them. I've done that. Whereas those, I wouldn't do that at all. I mean, you know, the, the, there's, no, there's no lethal dose recorded of Liberty Cats, neither is there. They've tried. No. I don't know who, who tried that, but it would have probably good, but... Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, think what don't people when they want to go really high dose with um psilocybin they extract the psilocybin from the mushroom because this is a whole other topic like you know extracting dmt from different barks but people you know because the mushrooms have got things in them that make you sick so they do there is a you know a limiting factor of having a really high dose but getting really sick whereas there's lots of there are lots of protocols on YouTube about extracting psilocybin from mushrooms, uh, and I think that's a whole other topic. But if people want massive doses, that's the route they usually go. Yeah, like a thirty gram dose, like in the uh, the, the clinical trials for PTSD. I mean, that's insane. Oh, yeah, yeah, the third. Yes, that was a really high dose. So somebody, oh, the question: Can you get high on this? Uh, on these ones, yes, but. Um, that's the sort of it's not the same as getting high it's not the same high at all as psilocybin and i've never tried these um anyway like this is all new to me i only found these today so 
like you, I'm going to be just trying drying them properly, like you said. The high temperature, the high, at least seventy degrees, not on the radiator. Uh, and um, you know, you can, like you were saying earlier, you can do it in the oven with the door open on the lowest setting. That's a good idea, actually, because anybody can do that. I mean, some people here are professionals, yeah. and they're going to have like. Uh, drying chambers and everything and other people are like really new to all this yet they've you know curious now yeah i mean there might be some kind of sweet spot like 78.9 degrees has got the best conversion rate once you know all the scientific sign boffins get into it and start looking at this thing properly you know um but us lot we just got a bit of grease proof paper and an oven with door open and we're like yeah we'll just see what it does <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's where I think like you can do chromat like liquid chromatography is quite a good way to look at different, you know, it all depends on what else I'm... is in the mushroom. I'm not the expert in this, but I know somebody who might be. But yeah, we're going to have to sort of. Um... Well, I know I know someone who runs basically a forensic testing laboratory, and they do test for drug testing. So they've got the facilities to test for drug compounds in blood and hair and things like that. So I would imagine they'd have the ability to effectively pull every single molecule apart in this thing and look. And if I say yeah. if I convert this, if I got this mushroom and did it, um, basically cut it in half. Or, or, and, and then give them a sample of the fresh tissue so they can see the the starting levels of antenic acid and muscomol and all of the compounds, and then take different parts and dry them at different temperatures um, and do different things to them and see how the conversion is working. Like your, your base was this, and then at mm. 75, we got to this, and then at 80, we got to this, and then at 90, you start to see a degradation of X, Y, and Z. Um, and then you might start being able to kind of figure out you know how to do certain things to the mushroom to uh, highlight specific compounds if you wanted more of the nootropic side of a little bit of the GABA side then you know be able to lower one down or higher one up I don't know oh yeah it's like another level of you sort of you'd need to know what you were starting with someone just asked is cyclocybe okay yes yes that they're a good company yeah I think it's to do with um it might be just you have to work with whatever batch that you get and you, and you just you know get a feeling for um for how it's going to be based on just sampling a, a dried a, a dried mushroom but yeah that's a whole other level i think if you wanted to sell it you'd have to standardize all of the amounts of the compounds in the mushroom but it can't be oh, sold no. and that's the only time when there would be a requirement so as soon as it gets commercialized that's when people will be interested in how much of each alkaloid or compound is in the mushroom because it matters then because you're selling to the public and you you have to tell them well it's got about 10 percent this and 50 percent that yeah. well i will say that it's actually illegal to sell this mushroom for human consumption it's the only oh, that's a good point yeah it's the only it's the only time that it's categorically categorically said that it's illegal to do is to sell it for human consumption but mm. you can dry it you can have it you can sell it as um, plant food like what they used to do back in the day with other certain substances in nightclubs plant food only you know and then uh, it was yeah. happy day bouncers couldn't do anything about it but yeah um the whole this is the thing like i, I was really in two minds about whether to do this or not um because i didn't want to open a can of worms that i couldn't put the lid back on you know what i mean what do you mean? Well, the thing is, it's like I've done this on, I've like innocently made a video about methylene blue and uh, you open a can of worms. But then I think this is yeah. back to what we were talking about earlier that I was saying, like, I don't know how old you are, but like I'm nearly 45 and it's like I'm at a stage where, OK, when I when 15 years ago or 20 years ago, I'd have been well up for this. Whereas because I've tried most things, I'm more well, you know, I just rather do things naturally. But I don't yeah. want people who are I don't want us to I don't want to be selfish with my knowledge and, and not, you know, help yeah. a younger person in their 20s. That's really curious because that's exactly how I was at that age. So it's exactly, sometimes yeah. you've got to let open the can of worms because it, this is all about you shouldn't have hidden information. And there's a lot of no, misnomer about these uh, fly agaric mushrooms like these saying don't touch them don't pick them and often oh, yeah. you know when when you know i've always found whatever the masses do or the media tells me to do i just do the opposite well put it this way about about a microphobia right the deadliest mushroom yeah. in the world the death cap i've taste tested yeah so i've got a death cap taken a bite of the of the cap nibbled it and spat it out right so as long as you don't consume like actually ingest the mushroom because um, it, it's it's a way of identifying some mushrooms, like in some mushroom guides, 
with the milk cat family, for example, like terrorists, they say taste the milk. So you'll cut the you'll cut the mushroom open, a white latex milk comes out, you dab it on your finger, you have a lick. Is it bitter? Is it not? If it's bitter, it's this. If it's not bitter, <laughs> then it's this. But mm. to say that people are genuinely scared of touching these things when I, you know I'm teaching people key identifying features are licking them. <laughs> yeah. And like I say, even to the degree that the the death cap, you know, you can smell, you can touch, um, you can I mean I don't advise people tasting it just in case they do accidentally swallow yeah. some, but just to make a point, it's not a it's not a, a key identifying feature tasting death cap, but just to make a point, I've nibbled the death cap, I've I've nibbled a lot of dangerous mushrooms because I know you only take a small amount in it's like you seeds, like you seeds are deadly poisonous, but you can oh, eat yeah. the flesh off the bed, you know. So you don't you don't put five in your mouth at once and you only spit four seeds out, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> but that's the thing you're a professional because how many years experience have you got in foraging and bushcraft and stuff because that's the other thing it's me i won't go as far as say professional but um i've, I've been keenly interested in bushcraft about be about maybe 12 15 years give or take oh, that, been come on, that is like an expert you know it's like but, uh... but foraging um i started off foraging probably about six, seven years ago, um, and I stayed well away from, because it, I forgot, you'll, you'll know what this is, Sarah, it's like, you start learning about something and you feel like you've got a handle on it, and then the more you learn about it, the more you realise you don't know about oh, it. Oh, that's me all the time, yeah, yeah, like the further out you, you know, it's the further you get away from the shore, the deeper the ocean, and I just end up in new and bigger rabbit holes all the time and i think yeah. i've learned it all and then there'll be another massive rabbit hole that i just go down and it's just never ending but yes exactly and then you kind of have to be a bit careful yeah yeah so i, I was i was about two years into mushroom foraging going around thinking yeah i know what that is i know what this is and blah blah blah, blah. and then i started eating a couple of mushrooms and luckily for me i was all right with it i started with the belief family but then um when i started to get into the other types of mushroom families and start to learn because I take one mushroom family at a time and every year mm -hmm. I'll specifically focus on a year on a particular family of mushroom for a year um I was thinking you know I'm like this is this and then you, you'd get a book and you'd start looking and you're like, oh shit no it's not I was dead sure it was that and 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 now I'm, a, I'm I'm significantly more comfortable with ID but it's just one of them things like mushrooms like the, the Russell family for example um they're a relatively family safe family of mushrooms to consume um, but you need a microscope to tell the different species apart because that's it. The, the, one of the key identifying, like, you know, how far does the, the top layer of the cap peel back? Is it two thirds or three quarters? And you're thinking, well, it's your judgment. <laughs> you know, is that two thirds or is that three quarters? Because you think it's yourself. That's a key identifying feature. So you've got to know the mushroom well enough, um, unless you've got a microscope, for example. And like I say, if people are looking at wavy caps, you know, that's a fatal mistake to make is that because a, a wavy cap, if you get it wrong with um, deadly gallerina, is really not going to be good. Now, luckily for us, the fly agaric is, is a very, very, very easy mushroom to identify. There's nothing in the UK that looks like a fly agaric, definitely not. Um, some people have been picking red russulas. Um, they're very small, uh, about this big, and slugs, they bite little bits um, of... Uh, the 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 rustler the, the the cap off so it looks like it's got white spots and i was walking through the woods minding my own business and um this other forager came up to me and she had a massive basket full of um these red and white mushrooms and uh she starts talking to me about making tinctures and making medicine out of mushrooms and all this kind of stuff I'm fucking hell you know you shit do you know what i mean blah blah blah, blah. So, what you got in basket? so what you got in basket and she went oh fly agaric i went they're not fly agaric love and she went, yeah, they are. And I says, they're rustler. And she's like, no, they're not. I says, that's a beechwood sickener, that. And she looked at it, and it basically a slug had nibbled little white holes in it. And she genuinely thought red mushroom, white holes, fly agaric. And I'm like, no. So it just goes to show, like, even some people that have got a handle on some mushrooms, and when they go over to another mushroom's family, no idea. That's really interesting, because the... Um... I knew there was something that was similar in the UK uh, that that uh, people have that you can that is, is edible. But yeah, exactly. I think it's like I'm just I just stick to the basics. But what the tip you just gave about learning one family at a time, 
that that's a really good a good one. And also, I think you can't you know, obviously you can only forage at this time of the year, really. So now's the time yeah. to go out. And it is my, my dad and I used to go mushroom hunting, so we've got loads of books at home. Like you know, we used to tick them off when you found one, and that was in Wales. So we have different mushrooms there. We used to have, find loads of puffballs, and I haven't seen a puffball for ages. But I had some puffballs the other day. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking in the wrong place, but you're quite close, are you? You lead way. Yes, yes. Yeah, you should come down. We'll go foraging together. Yeah, we should do. Oh, definitely. I think for anybody that's interested in all of this and foraging, all the comments we've been having is that like there's a massive amount of all kinds of mushrooms out. The crops have been insane. So if you're interested in learning, not to go go out now. You'll find. Oh, definitely. All sorts. Like, every, every, everywhere apart from run by me. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say. What, because you yeah, picked um, them all? No, no, literally, like, I've got about three main woodlands that are around the gym that I, I, I have, um, yeah. that I forage in all the time, and yeah. the years I've been foraging, they've been absolutely rammed with mushrooms, there's there's deaf caps in there, there's chicken in the woods, there's beefsteak fungus, there's maitake, there's everything in there, like, anything I could want is in that wood, and this mushroom season, it has just been barren, like, I don't know what's happened. It's insane. Like I've had, I had to go to Scotland for a good mushroom to to get my mushroom fix. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, oh. and, and I got to Scotland and it was rife. Like there was just you couldn't you couldn't walk anywhere but step around the mushroom. And I was just screwed. It was insane. Somebody's just um, in the comments put that panther. I think the panther caps are more interesting effects. They're just stronger than the fly agaric, aren't they? I just wanted to make sure that people in the comments knew we hadn't forgotten about them. But the panther cap, I think, is the next level up to the fly agaric. And I'm sure it's got beneficial things in it as well. Uh, I just haven't looked into that properly. But, you know, we could always... Do the, where do the panther caps grow? The panther caps grow in the same places as what the fly agaric will. So there's, there's three mushrooms that look like a panther cap, right? Two of them are edible. Well, they say this. They say when you're foraging the Amanita family in general, if you come across a mushroom in, 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 in the wild and you, you always dig a mushroom up from the base to get the um, what, what, what could be underground is a key identifying feature. And on the Amanita family, it's called a vulva. It's like a ball-like base at the bottom. Some of them come in like, it's got this, basically it's like a little ball with a guttering around the, the bottom of the base and you'll have the stipe or the stem. Some of them have got a full-blown like egg sac like this, like the death cap, for example. So you always want to take it up. Now, then you're looking at the cap and you start thinking, OK, so it's a brown cap with white spots. You've got three mushrooms that are in that kind of characteristic. You know it's an amanita because it's got white gills, for example. It's got a skirt around the stem and it's got this ball on the bottom. Then you're looking at the cap colour. Amanita muscaria has got a red cap. And then you've got Amanita panthrana, which is the panther cap. Then you've got Amanita excelsa, which is the grey spotted amanita and then you've got amanita rubescens which is the blusher now wow. they always say in the amanita family the blusher and the grey spotted amanita the only difference really between them is when you look at the skirt on the blusher and the grey spotted amanita the small striations going down the skirt right mm -hmm. and the panther cap looks almost identical apart from the skirt is smooth that's it so a lot of people are scared of eating blushers and um, grey spotted amanita is because of the risk of consuming the deadly panther cap, mm -hmm. which we've oh, just I found see. out really isn't really deadly. I mean, if you put it you in get a, a stew, surprise. Yeah. you get a surprise. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're, they're the things. And then you start looking at the amanita. Now, if you're in France, you'd find um, amanita muscaria. There's two variations of it. Um, there is a more yellow one in France and in, in uh, America, I believe, the Muscaria's cap almost. It's like the sun bleaches the cap and orange. Mm -hmm. They start off red and they start to go orange. And then in France as well, there's the season mushroom. I don't know its, it's Latin name because I've never come across it, but it looks like a Muscaria, but it is bright yellow. But, yeah, there's yeah. there's lots. Um, somebody, um, Xander, just asking about the app called Shroom ID that tells you what the mushroom is what's your thoughts on apps because i've got a, a, a friend who's got um like a plant or a leaf app and it's pretty accurate what would you what's your thoughts on a shroom app so i shouldn't really say it's, this, called, yeah. it's called shroom id it's like an app yeah 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 I've, I've got it myself so um, oh right okay 
most foragers, because I don't know why, because the app that I've used, which is the same one, right, is pretty much bang on every time, right? Pretty much. But most other foragers will say to you, no, don't use them, don't use them, and they show you silly videos of them taking photographs of their fingers and then they're trying to ID it as a mushroom, right? They say it's dangerous to use that app. But I only think it's because they like to have the glory of, you have to go to someone like me for me to ID that for you, yeah. right? But the vast majority of the time, the things that I ID with the app, so when I use the app, it is correct, right? But yeah, there that, is some yeah, that's a really good way to start. Yeah, so so use the apps as um, a starting point, and then you think to yourself, okay, the app has told me that it's this. I'll check this family, and then you have to then get the mushroom and learn. I've got a video on my page about characteristics of mushrooms, the things that you're looking for. You're looking at, like, gill colour, spacing between the gills, cap shape. You've got so then if the cap's just like a, a dome shape or it might have like a little nipple in the middle, then the you know, so all the cap shapes are all different. Um, and one mushroom can look identical to another mushroom but have a different cap shape, and then it might be it might be a different mushroom, it might not be. And and as mushrooms get older, the caps change shape, but then mm. you've got the stem. Um, there's different types of stemmed mushrooms, there's mushrooms that got different types of skirts. So you have mm. to know all the different characteristics of the mushrooms, but the apps are a very good place to start. And if you think, okay. This is this mushroom that is X, Y, and Z. I'm looking for these characteristics on this mushroom. And then if all the characteristics fit, happy days. If they don't, then you need to start looking somewhere else. But nine out of ten, it will be in the same family as well, of the same genus. Yeah. But I think that's a really good take home for people that if they're really interested, not to, you know, listen to people who try and put them off the app. It's a really good learning tool and to embrace yeah. it and take it with them. And it's reliable. I think I'm going to have to, you know, wrap, wrap up uh, for for yeah. for now because I've got uh, I, I might go and dry some of the, my mushrooms. But you know, it's been a real pleasure speaking to you again. It's been no really worries. a really a really good way to spend my Sunday. 